For all the latest reviews, interviews, and everything entertainment in Tamil, Kannada, Malayalam, and Telugu, subscribe to Film Companion South now. Hello, everyone. It's Film Companion. I am now at the office in Hyderabad of Sunita Tati, who is the founder and CEO of Guru Films. Hello, Sunita, and welcome to Film Companion South. And welcome to our office, Thank Guru you. Family. Thank you. You know, every time I I set up for a, for an interview, I kind of do a little rummaging thing where. I go through people's scenes so I get a little idea of what they're about, and I found this very interesting. Richard Dawkins' "Outgrowing God," which is right here. Mm -hmm. Do you want to just? You will find quite a few those here, anywhere from history of right. God. So, is like a, a special interest of yours? It certainly is because of my experiences in life, okay. and I am at a place where. Uh, um my journey has been outgrowing many things whether outgrowing a small town moving to america um, outgrowing a family that is into engineers and uh, doctors and uh, coming into media and uh, so outgrowing has been my journey so okay. I, i i don't want to suddenly get, get into having a long conversation on that but yeah it is yeah, uh, we don't want to talk for outgrowing god now so congratulations 10 years of guru films uh What do you Thank think you. has been your biggest achievement? That I'm still here. Okay. <laughs> It's not an easy place to be. Um, after ten years, um, I have to say I am where I'm supposed to be, and it will be an exciting next ten years. So I feel that we are a small sampling, okay. but I can already see the tree being very big. Oh, nice. Yeah. So you're, you're, when you when you say you're still here, you mean? you're holding on and and kind of surviving in the business that's what you mean very much okay. i mean okay. um, if you go back and look back and see which is the production houses that started with the humbling beginnings that we did um and how did they sustain you will see very few okay and uh, people come they make a couple of films and go and for me to make the decision to leave a comfortable corporate job and say that oh let's start a production house and uh, if you read about me as you said you will see that there are many hiccups there and to kind of find out the space the what is your niche and then rediscovering yourself constantly outgrowing as you say uh, what you thought but again constantly staying very inspired and aspired i realize now after 10 years when i look back that uh, it, it took a lot out of me but it also filled me with a lot of uh, hope Let's say I want to become a producer. Right? Mm -hmm. What is the number one quality that I need to have? Resilience. Resilience. Okay. And exactly knowing what you want to do, because the distractions are many here. Okay. And uh, producer is like, um, in many ways, the other half of the marriage. So put aside the gender aspect of it. It is a marriage. Right. and creating something together hand in hand is what marriage is all about and so is cinema so you should be very clear um which role you want to play sometimes you are the husband the provider sometimes you are the caretaker like the mother and uh, you need to be switching that role constantly depending on who the other half is right. so um to be a producer you should be constantly changing the roles and um even though people say that you should come with a suitcase of money and then you can become the producer um maybe that works for some people but the real producer no right um, right i that's a fantastic answer what can you define that the, the caretaker aspect like uh, with with let's say ob ab for instance uh what, what what was the caretaking aspect of that film the caretaking aspect is that i nurtured the story for literally 2 years believed in it and went after it okay okay um i saw the film in 2016 um i was consulting for a korean company called cross pictures and that's when i had to requestion myself about the storytelling as a producer in india because i already failed what i was doing and i wanted to do something very different right. and not to go into that but to focus on oh baby the idea was then what do i do i love this story i want to tell it's not a hero story here nobody listens to stories unless it's a, a hero and then i get on the flight that day and guess who's sitting in the two seats ahead of me it happens to be sam oh and something just clicked in me and i just walked up to her and i said that i have something for you uh, would you like to look at it and she said ha just send me a trailer 
So there are a couple of films at that time I'm assessing and then I sent her this and she said, um, I, I love the trailer. Uh, I don't think I can work in 2017, but let's relook at it in 2018. Which means for one year you're sitting on a film and then you come to know what's happening in her personal life. You kind of wait patiently. I have to tell you, I didn't go to anybody else. Okay. It was always Sam for me from day one. And I just believed in that and you have to nurture it. You have to wait for it. So many people will come at you and say, ha ha, why don't you take it to Kirti Suresh? She's such a popular star now. Why don't you take it to Sai Palavi? Why don't you? Then you are like, no, this is what I believe Something in. Something instinctive tells you. It's tells you um, that's who, you know, is going to play that. So 2018 comes and um, I take the film to Suresh and then you are again kind of nurturing it and Suresh haven't done in the recent times a very strong female centric he's like are you sure and um, Suresh is like oh do you have any film that we can do with Venki or you know with Rana or uh, you know Che so the conversation changes correct again it gets diluted to what somebody else want to do to what I want to do again then you are holding on to your thought you are saying that no this is my instinct it's telling me this is how it should be um, that is a very defining moment in my life right. and uh, that's when I had to be both the matriarchal and patriarchal about what I believe in and say this is the, <laughs> this is the arrow I'm going to go at and uh, when uh, um, Sam saw the film she believed in it right. and then Nandini happened and then Suresh believed in us as a team and then you just become the provider and you trust that uh, person you are marrying to who happens to be Nandini and she's a very dear friend and she believed in it and you just ride it and go at it and that's right. so uh, when we're talking instinct right uh, the earlier films that you produced those were also you know you got into them with an instinct that they would work how does instinct work in this producer business because you know in this case you know, it gave you your first big hit, oh baby. Uh, but the same instinct was at work in the earlier films also. What do you think? Were you able to reassess? Oh, totally. Uh, and then say, okay, I had this instinct that this would work, but this is why it didn't work. Were you able to do that? Totally. Okay. I think uh, if you don't do that, you won't arrive at a film like oh baby. Um, please remember instinct always doesn't translate to success, especially box office success. Right. Um, instinct sometimes is good, sometimes it, depending on your state of mind, your instinct works. Right. Um, if you take my first film, I was just coming out of Shore in the City with Raj and DK, which I have executive produced and I believed in a certain kind of cinema. I, I believed in a very strong storytelling yeah. and for me Bangar Kodi Petta was that. Even till today, a lot of people come up to me and say that film is ahead of its times. Which I think is something what I did with my earlier you know, projects I did. They were ahead of their time. It's just that sometime instinct meets the timeline of life very correctly and that intersection is success. Okay. 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 Yeah. You worked as an assistant on films like Hyderabad Blues and Maleshwari. Uh, does producer need to have uh, direction, direction skills? Direction. Ha. Oh, that's a tough one for me. <laughs> okay. Producer historically is known to be somebody who puts the money. Producer is somebody who builds that home for the director to come and make what they want to make. Correct? I mean, producer is the one that goes, gets the fire, gets the dish, gets all the ingredients. Then the director comes and says, let me put it all together and make surprise you with some nice garnishing on top of it. But to pick up all the ingredients, the producer need to know what the director is thinking. Right. I think that's very critical. It's very important to know the wiring of the director. It's important to know how a director wants to tell that story so the producer can do his job best. Right. It's very important to know direction. If not, you will just bring a suitcase. You become a financier. Yeah. yeah. That's not the role of a producer. Yeah. You want to be a creative producer. So. Yeah, uh, creative producer and you are also a businessman trying to package the project. Yeah. You are also marketing the project, taking it out there and you are also making it successful by providing that platform for it to shine and to give it the stage. So unless you don't know what direction is, I don't think you can be a producer. Yeah, but you never wanted to become a director. I wanted to be, a, I came to India to be a director. 
when I graduated from film school, like uh, because both Shaker and uh, Nagesh strongly recommended I go to film school after Hyderabad Blues and Dollar Dreams. And I went back to film school, finished film school and I said I want to direct and I came to India to direct with a script. Uh, even till today I have it. I hope to make it someday. I would love to direct. Um, I am by nature, I am a very visual person. I mean, I am a little dyslexic from childhood. So, my I used to look at a photograph, the uh, textbook and go and write the exam. So, for me, visual comes first. Even when somebody tells me, I visualize it. And uh, I am very keen to bring my visual to the, to the screen. Um, very clear what I want to make and direct as a uh, director. So, just waiting for Guru to become the tree, so I can just take the shade under the tree <laughs> as a director. Now, what made you say, I want to start my own production house, you know, because there are different ways of becoming a producer. This is probably the toughest way uh, to say, I'm going to start my own production house. See, I wish somebody told me it was tough when I started. <laughs> for me, it was why not. Um, see, when I came back from the US and started to observe people of my generation, um, like whether it is uh, Shaker or whether it is Rajan DK, whether it is, uh, you know, Nagesh. There are people very, with very unique voices. Um, there are a group of us that came back um, in, the, uh, in, in the 2000 era and we were wanting to bring our voice out. Um, some ways we are actually ahead of our times. Um, and I saw those voices were getting um, kind of shut down, calmed with hero-centric cinema. Uh, story wasn't the king. Even though producer knew the story was the king and the director knew the story was the king and the screenplay writer knew story was the king, it is the story that caters to the hero, uh, which even till today is what Indian cinema is all about, is what worked. And I was like, so what is this? You never get to tell a story for the sake of telling the story. Um, uh, that I felt very, um, sorry to say, but a very um, uh, survival based storytelling. Yeah. A story is trying very hard to survive. It's just drowning in the imagery of the hero. And uh, I saw an amazing documentary about Hollywood cinema and how it changed from 50s to 60s. And I felt we were going through that period in India. The, the documentary talks about the journey of Clint Eastwood, the journey of uh, uh, James Stewart or, you know, uh, great names, how they started this great, you know, um, frontiers breaking down and how they were like crossing the frontiers. And you were talking about that kind of cinema, correct? I mean, you're, you're expanding the boundaries. And 50s is when um, the Second World War ended. And the cinema was taking its shine where the economic element of the cinema started to come out. And suddenly, uh, you know, Clint Eastwood need to look at, am I really going to make the cowboy cinema forever? Am I going to make the Jimmy Stewart had to rethink, am I going to make an It's a Wonderful Life came. Yeah. And it changed cinema. It's the common man cinema that happened. And then Harrison Ford came. And suddenly a new cinema happened from American graffiti to there is Star Wars. So I saw the Indian cinema 70s and 80s and 90s all about our survival, our, our economic status. We needed a hero. We needed a hero to tell us, to entertain us on a hard day. Even Amitabh Bachchan quotes it many times that he, he said, I want a blood, you know, like sweating, you know, people that just churn their, you know, um, sweat and came to theatres. I wanted them to look up at the screen and say, ah, that's my hero. But that is changing. We are at a society where economic stand is changing. All of us are heroes now. All of us don't worry. Oh, America is someplace else. Every family has a member that went to America. Every family member know what Disney is. Every family member know that they can watch star movies. So I thought that cinema is going to change in India. Story is going to be the king. And heroes are going to look for stories. So story is not going to be manipulated, polluted to fit the hero. So I wanted to be that plug. I wanted to set the stepping stone. And as a matter of fact, the first 10 years went into that. Finding those stories, right. surviving uh, and becoming that little sampling that people will look at and say, oh, these people make good stories. 
and i think that's where we are at that little spark cafe small guiding light um that's one of the reasons i said that we need to come in and look at differently we need to create a platform that stands for stories that stands for good stories so a director can come and direct and a dialogue writer is not going to direct a screenplay writer is going to take time and say that it's going to take me 2 years to write a story so do you like it yeah go right please say that again because i just need more people to hear this <laughs> <laughs> because you know it, i think we built this horrible culture of right. asking screenwriters to oh the directors uh, the actors dates are available uh, you know in march so quickly let's quickly let put something together i mean you. i went through that as assistant director i used to i used to you know kind of get hot scenes and hot dosa like a breakfast <laughs> and i feel sad for my actors because they are sitting there practicing their lines not the emotion by the way practicing the lines and somebody is you know lip syncing it for you at the dubbing and then they're reading it on the set and you're emoting an actor's job is to emote a scene which means they need to perfect the lines a director job is to give a visual not perfect the dialogues a screenwriter takes minimum 2 years to write a script because that's when he shines everything he or she shines everything but Yes. that's going to that has to change yeah. i mean the world is looking at us we have to change we can't forever quote you know vyasa's mahabharat the man wrote mahabharat across 5000 years <laughs> and valmiki kept on rewriting ramayana till it became what it became we can't keep on you know quoting those yeah. forever yeah. i mean yeah. Yeah. yeah any of the finest films you take in india and you ask a screenwriter how long it took you to write they will say minimum 2 years minimum 5 years minimum 7 years why do you think a book makes a better screenplay because it's a written beginning act 1 act 2 and act 3 so yeah, yeah, yeah. you need to give value to writers you need to give them time to imagine dream now sahasam swasiga sahiko uh, and its tamil remake were two films that marked a bit of a jump for you in terms of profile because till then you were making relatively I don't like to use the word small films, but a little, uh, you know, like suddenly you you went into like okay, big director, Kartik Menon, big star, what kind? What 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 did that jump? How did that jump come about? One is I admired Gautam work always. He's a great technician, and there is always that producer in me wanting to work with a great technician, um, and wanted to see that craft how it kind of comes out. And when Gautam said the line it is a very inspiring line he talked about fear he talked about what brings when you cross that line of fear what a new version of us comes out and that's very exciting for me because right. i went through such moments in my life and i identified with that so traveling with gautam was what was the most top line element for it you know what does it feel like as a producer to work with uh, um, a director of that class and that technique and that craftsmanship Right, right. And he brought everything else to the table. He brought a Rahman to the table, and uh, in the Tamil, he brought a Simbu to the table. And there is always Che, very close to my heart, and uh, everything just fell into place. Yeah. Okay. When a movie that that you expect to do a certain number doesn't do that certain number, how do you handle that? Like when you reassess that that particular film, what do you think happened? Lots of rain happened. Okay. And wow. Okay. and chennai floods happened and uh, um also the timelines i think uh, what you realize as a producer is uh, like any other product when you come out of the joy of making passion all of it the craft and come out and say i want to make the film there is a certain price to it and you should always make it in that price and everything else on top of that becomes premium and you don't have to worry about anything else so every film need to be at a certain budget and that journey taught me that i was not well equipped to put those boundaries that i did not have that voice and strength as a producer to say this is all i am going to make it in and to be able to stand up to my um, other half which is the director because sometimes you get so mesmerized in the journey of making it you are okay to pump in that extra crore you think you can make it later hope always doesn't translate to box office success 
budget translates to box office success. So I needed to keep my hope in a small box and lock it after that and bring it only when needed. <laughs> Obviously, you know, when OBB did well, that was a very happy moment for you. But how do you handle hits and flops? I don't see them differently. Personally, for me, it can be different for others. Flop is a very uh, box office phenomenon. Yeah. It's a very box office number phenomenon. When we start a form of telling a story, we start it only because we believe in it. Yeah, sure. A hit or flop, same effort goes into it. So it is a piece of work on a canvas. So I think first we all should believe in that. Then you wear the cap of a businessman and say that, oh, let me look back and say what is the flop aspect of it. Is it about 20% of the film? Uh, could I have recovered? Could I have done my numbers differently? Could I have done, put together the timeline of making the film differently? So all of it comes to, could the story be told better? Could the casting have been done better? Could the film made in a shorter amount of time rather than period it took because that added to overheads and expenses? Um, could I have sold the film better and marketed better, released at a different time? So all these aspects contribute to the flop. First, of course, being the story. So then you take those learnings and apply it to your next one. Um, and you try to apply that as you keep going. Because every flop teaches you something, every success teaches you something. So I think it's, uh, it's just a journey of like any uh, serial entrepreneur. <laughs> right. If you go under, you learn from it. If you sell it well, you kind of learn from it. Right. So, For example, what did O Baby teach you? O Baby taught me, number one, that adapting a remake, doing it the right way is very important because probably we are the first film that was an official Korean remake that did very well in India and we adapted it with a lot of care. I think we had to, because when we went to the, we, when we hit the ground of wanting to make it, everything that came at us was not, didn't do very well, whether it's a free make or official. And we were the first one coming and saying that let's, we wanting to make it and that too with a female lead. So there were so many question marks. So we, I had to go back and recheck those question marks and see how I can apply them to to the next two films, which are again remakes for me. So that is the learning. How do you culturally adapt a story well? What is that cultural, emotional core that we wanting to make it? And not lose my original theme, like what is the new story I'm telling to the table? Bringing it to India, bringing it to the regional space. That was very, very critical for me. What am I, what am I defining very different in every story that I'm saying? I think that became very important. I learned the value of budget by working with uh, Suresh sir because he's been my mentor and he teach, he's a very tough businessman. He's the only producer that has the highest number of hit ratio in India. It's not easy to learn those skills where you think, haha, yes, yes, I can spend this extra. You come to the table and he'll say, why? What makes you think you can recover? What makes you think that you can be very careful by getting that bottom line right? So, as I started to question myself in the upcoming projects, those answers became very natural, you know, wiring for me that let's look at it from this point of view. Let's look at how can we sell this film point of view. So, all those matter. All of those elements come into the learnings as you go forward. Right. So how do these learnings help in the present Telugu film scenario? Uh, uh, do you run into trouble uh, in terms of a director, let's say, no, 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 this producer, she asked too many questions. Uh, let's go to somebody who's just going to get the money and be happy with it. Is oh, yeah. That, that happens all the time? All the time. Okay. All the time. Okay. I mean, think of it, um, nobody likes to be questioned. Right. I mean, that's the beauty of the creative field, right? The video you are playing in your head is the best video. Yeah. You think that ah, they are not getting it. And that makes it even more difficult for them that I ask them all the creative questions, all the proper story related plot. And I am not buying into just because the dialogue just reads better. Um, I ask the entire plot point. So yeah, you face those hiccups. So uh, this is tending a little bit personal, but uh, you 
you literally embody strength. You've beaten uh, cancer twice, and you're going on in this industry. Uh, is there ever a side of you that said, you know, life has dealt me these blows, so to speak? Uh, let me just relax for a bit, uh, because what you're doing is a, I wouldn't say stressful thing, but it's a strenuous thing, because you know you every day you kind of read scripts and have arguments and you know it's like goes on and on and on. How do you balance the personal and the and the professional? See, one is, uh, it is a personal industry. There is nothing professional about this. When you are passionate about telling a story, it's personal. A lot of people ask me that. Oh, I want to be professional in this. There's no professional in this. Everything is personal here. It's a very subjective field. You are in a head-on collision every day in, in facing conflict. It's a constant fear or flight. So cancer is something you live with. I mean, um, I was, I, I'm a cancer survivor twice in my life and I didn't expect the second one, uh, neither I expected the first one. So it is a very stressful field. It is a space where also you have to work with a lot of willpower. Yeah. Cancer taught me that. Cancer showed to me that I had courage and I had to recognize it. Uh, cinema constantly brings fear to me, but I face it with courage. So that facing every day teaches me that I'm fighting cancer every day. So it doesn't, it doesn't um, make a stressful situation, even though it kind of hits you. I take a moment to kind of uh, gather myself and say that now let me choose. Do I choose fear or do I choose courage? And I realize that as a nature, I'm always a courage choosing person. So cancer taught me courage. Cancer taught me that I had that courage in me. So fear is a constant. It's not going to go anywhere. It's going to be always there. So I have to light myself and say today is the day where I'll be courageous. So. Tell me one terrible film you saw recently and said, oh my God, I wish I made that. I really liked um, Broche Varavar. Um, I think uh, he's a phenomenal maker, someone I will be watching out. Um, in my own little masala way, I liked um, Attar Inti Gdharedi. Yes. There is a huge quotient in me <laughs> that just waits to come out on the yeah. commercial side and I, I loved it. I, I would love to make a um, film like that. And um, I really liked uh, um, recent Anand Devar Kunda film, was it uh, Middle Class Melodies? Yeah. I really liked the way it kind of shaped. It had a beautiful voice. Yeah. I liked Pelli Chupulu very much. Um, Tarun is someone I'll be really watching out for. Um, he's, he's got a wonderful, very sensitive, well-crafted um, craftsmanship. You know, I find very few writers turned directors that close the story threads and he tends to do that. I mean, it's just a beautiful thing to kind of look at. Um, yeah, that's, in, in the recent times, I have to say these are the people I'm really admiring quite a bit. When you say, I want, I'll be closing watching them, uh, why don't you just pick up the phone and call them and say, do you have anything that we can make together? Already happening. Oh, it's already happening. So I didn't want to say that, so. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm like closely watching them makes me sound like, oh, okay, this film, this person's film is released and I'm going to watch it, but then I'm just going to come back to my office, you know, but I'm like, why don't you go? So, yeah, I'm no, I am, I am. The conversations are on. It's just that we need to find something to work together. Yeah. And uh, right now I have my plate honestly filled with quite a few remakes because that's going to um, carve a lot of, you know, um, immediate need that is in the story vacuum that I like to do. Right. And some of these directors don't like to make a remake. They like to bring their original voice and I'm waiting for them. And they take their time to write, by the way. Right. So you should give them the two year time or yeah. three year time. <laughs> so uh, we'll end by asking about what is the next 10 years for Guru Films look like? Because you finished ten, 10 years, you're going on to the next 10 years. You've already answered a lot of it in, your, in what you've said, but something consolidated? I mean, uh, where do you see yourself? Like, 
it's, it's such an HR question. I hate asking this, but where do you see yourself in 10 years? Well, I hope the, the answer won't be so <laughs> HR-like. So terrible, right? Yeah. <laughs> With the remakes, I think there is a huge scope for us to tell a very different kind of cinema, a very progressive, inclusive, um, a global cinema in a regional space. And I'm excited about that. We have quite a few in exciting slate lined up for the next three years. Then a dream of mine, of if you, everybody asks me, how come you came back to India, you know, your family is there, you know, your parents are there and nobody comes back here, you, you found the train back and, you know, people go other way. I came here to be that global filmmaker, to take content from South of India to the world and to bring content to South of India and become that bridge of a storyteller because I consider myself to be the first global citizen. We were that generation that was wanting to come here, wanting to tell the stories. We grew up with the grandparents, that Chanda Mama that grandparents gave us and the imaginations we had, how it used to have this, you cross the seven seas and you find an island and you know, the whole, mm -hmm. um, that those are the stories we grew up on, you know, and um, by literature, we were so rich at that point of time. But now I want to become that global filmmaker that takes the stories from South of India to the world. And um, the announcement of Arrangements of Love with yeah. Phil John was one of, those, one of those stories. And I'm very excited about that. We have a beautiful lineup of slate lined up for international cinema. And uh, at least two, three of them are now going to be announced in the coming year. So excited about that. Nice. Um, we are making, uh, in, in the same remake and some of the original space, we are making exciting collaborations in Hindi. So I'm excited about that. So this year we have Telugu, we have a Tamil, we have an English and we have a Hindi going on the floor. So and on top of it, um, where slowly we want to introduce our graphic novels. I mean, my dream, my dream of coming to India back is to take those ancient culture stories and present them in a very new way to the world. Right which is what Japan did. Japan took its temple culture and presented through anime some of the most fabulous storytelling and Spirited Away is very close to my heart. I would love to take a Spirited Away from India to Oscars. That's where we are going. That's, I hope you reach there. Thank you very much for this interview because you are, I mean, one of the rare interviewees, your, your answers, you know, almost seem to carry a subtext of spirituality and I really enjoyed that a lot. It was it was really an honor talking to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much.